If you have your Bible, won't you go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. We are studying the subject, Jesus Christ, a king priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus says, present ministry is that of kingship and priesthood. Hebrews 7, 25, wherefore? He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Praise God for his word. This is a powerful scripture that Jesus is able to save us to the uttermost. This word is to encourage you. And Paul wrote to the Hebrew Christians, who had got saved from Judaism. And now that Jesus had died and buried, rose again and ascended, he wasn't there. And yet the Holy Ghost was there. And they were being persecuted for their faith and their commitment. And their their stuff was even being plundered. And uh, they were encouraged by this. I believe God is a God of encouragement. I believe that one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to encourage you so that you can move forward. So there's a word we looked at, yes, last Sunday. One word from God, just one, can, if God will anoint that word, can change your life. And that's what happened on Sunday. It was the word better, better. If you're going to go back, you're going to go to that which is worse. If you're going to stay neutral, you're also going to settle for that which is worse. But there's something better for you if you will persevere and move on in Jesus in spite of your circumstances, your trials, and disappointments. And the first point we saw that Jesus Christ is better than angels. Hebrews 1 verse 4, being so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus Christ is better than angels, and angels now are not over us, but they are under us. And they are now our ministering spirits. They are our servants. Every angel is given to us by God through Jesus, because Jesus has been raised up to a place of being better than the angels And so you are better than angels, and now they're here to serve you. Don't go back where the devil will destroy you. Go forward where the angels will serve you. Number two, Jesus gives us a better hope. In Hebrews 7, 19, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope by the which we draw nigh unto God. And so the hope of the new covenant is better than the hope of the old covenant. And through this hope that we have, we draw nigh to God. And so it's a better hope. It's a better dream. It's a better plan. It's a better future. It's better than you've ever thought you would be able to to ever achieve in your life. A hope for the future a bright expectancy of tomorrow. And so you can't afford to to stay neutral. You cannot afford to go back. You're going to go back to a worse hope. Number three, Jesus Christ is the surety of a better covenant, a better testament. And the new covenant is a better covenant than the old, better agreement signed in his own blood, and it's made of better promises. And so you cannot go back. You're moving forward. I see every one of you moving forward in the name of Jesus. But better, better, better is upon you. Better is written indelibly upon your mind. And better is written indelibly upon your heart by the Holy Ghost. And therefore, there is no room for discouragement. There's only room for encouragement, even though the trials may be severe Trials don't last forever. It comes to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a better agreement in blood of Jesus. Number four, 
Jesus offered better sacrifices. In the Old Testament, it was the blood of animals. In the New Covenant, he took his own blood into heaven. And now his blood speaks mercy instead of judgment. Blood of animals only could cover sin. The blood of Jesus remits sin. Hebrews 9.23 It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. And so Jesus offers a better sacrifice for us all. Why? Because better is your deal in life. Better than your past. Better than your present. Better than you've ever planned for your life. Then number five, Jesus gives us a better and enduring substance of our faith, which is our faith. Faith is a substance. Whatever you lost, the Heavenly Father is resourceful. And last week I shared with you that the father of the prodigal son, even though the prodigal son wasted his inheritance, but when he came back, the father was so resourceful, his inheritance was still intact. And this morning, it doesn't matter the mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter the wrong decisions you've made. It doesn't matter how you've wasted your life. Wherever you are, if you turn back to God, whether you've gone left, right, wherever you are, if you turn back to God, you will find there is a better substance reserved in heaven for you. Hebrews 10, 34, for you had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully to the spoiling of your goods. You see, they were robbed, they were done down. Knowing in yourselves, this is something you've got to know in yourself to overcome discouragement, that in heaven you have a better and enduring substance. And then number six, Jesus gives us a better heavenly country. There's only one safe place for you and I. And that is the will of God. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so God makes us heavenly citizens while we're in the earth. And so wherever you are, whatever country you are, if you will first live from heaven as a heavenly citizen, in whatever situation, you can have protection, uh, provision, and sustenance. Hebrews 11:6. But now they desire a better country. You see, it does, at the best, the best country in the world is, is not like the kingdom of God. Governments of this world are not like the kingdom of God, not like the government of Jesus. And you will never ever be satisfied with a country or a government of this world. Make no mistake. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Every one of you should desire that. And wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. This is the city of God that we live in. And the streets are made of gold. We talk about wealth. Then number seven, Jesus gives us a better resurrection. And that is so powerful because the fear of death is what we should be delivered from. And the last enemy that must be overcome is death. And Jesus overcame death. And Hebrews 11.35, women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. It's better than reincarnation, and it's better than hell. Now, whatever you come from, Jesus is better and he makes it better for you. And therefore, if you want better for your life, you look to the better one who is Jesus, and you keep moving forward because he makes it better for you. Everything Jesus did, everything he is doing, he's not doing it just for himself. He's doing it for you as his, his body. Now there are four different sections in the Word of God that deal with the past, present, and future. And we need to rightfully divide the Word of Truth. Number one, there is a substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ 
on the cross in his death, burial, resurrection. And that means what God has done for us through Christ. When it gets to what God has done for us, you will always find it in the past tense. So your past is redeemed. Your future is secure. And you have power in the present to live your life. And that's what God wants you to be consumed about. But number two, there is what God does in and through us by the Holy Spirit. In the new birth, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues or languages. So when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then now you're born again of God. Not only are you born again of God, but now you can see the kingdom. And now you can enter the kingdom. Before you were born again, you couldn't see it. You couldn't understand this. And you couldn't enter it. But being born again of the Holy Spirit means now you're a citizen of heaven. And that's an activity of the Holy Ghost that God does in your life for you to be born again. Then number three, and that's what we're looking at, is what Christ is doing for us now in his high priestly ministry as king priest at the right hand of the Father. There is the present high priestly ministry. And we connect with this through an anointing of kingship, an anointing of priesthood. And that's what the royal priesthood is all about. Then number four, there is what the Holy Spirit does through us as we preach the Jubilee message. And so you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. So you don't make shipwreck of your faith. You're a proof producer. You bring forth the fruit of what you believe. And people can see that you are for signs and wonders. I see you like that this morning. I see every one of you like a city that's built on a hill that cannot be hid. I see you as a sign and a wonder of the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. And I see you totally unashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's a power of God unto salvation. And so what Jesus Christ is presently doing now, our king and a high priest is ministering as a priest in heaven that the Holy Spirit will make what he has done for us in his death, burial, and resurrection a reality. Many Christians only know what Jesus has done as a historical truth. They don't know it as a present reality. And if you don't tap in and connect properly, with what Jesus is presently doing at the right hand of the Father, you won't have the manifestation of what he has done. I see everybody with manifestation. Every one of you delivered from the power of sin, delivered from the record of sin. I see every one of you delivered from sickness and disease. I see every one of you delivered from poverty. The curse is broken. There's no curse working in your life. There's blessing upon blessing and gift heaped upon gift. And it's not by mind, it's by the Holy Ghost. He's anointing you with fresh oil for that this morning. Say, I receive in Jesus' name.